Okay, guys, uh, thank you for dropping by. So let's start. Do you have a specific questions or should I just present or how do you want to do it? I'm doing uh, actually, uh, I'm going to show the interview to my classmate. Oh, okay, the recording. Yeah, record. Okay, great. Do it. So do you have any specific questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Let's begin. So uh, my first question is, uh, what's the meaning of life for you, in your uh, personal opinion? As, uh, well, so you want my personal opinion or you want the opinion of Islam? Uh, I both. Mean both. Both. Okay, both. Yes. Okay, well, I follow Islam, so my personal opinion is going to be the Islamic understanding as well. Right? right. Okay, so do you, do you want to tell me what's your perspective of life? My perspective of life? Yeah. I mean, uh, as, a, as a Christian, mm -hmm. so our uh, meaning of life is to, uh, you know, be from the God's will and but in my personal opinion, I mean, just enjoy the life because that's what the meaning of life is. The life, life itself is to enjoy. Okay, so are you enjoying this interview? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So that's the most enjoyable thing you can do right now. Yeah. Instead of going to maybe just go to a party and party somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Right? You know, flow. Yeah. yeah? Okay, that's good. All right, yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, so this is my understanding as well. Right, basically, is to follow God's commands, right, which gives us a basic set of things, but there's a lot of flexibility in it too. So it's not very narrow, there's a boundaries, but you have a lot of flexibility. So as long as you're within the boundary, you can eat, drink, enjoy yourself, but within that boundary, right? When you step outside the boundary, you start obeying Satan, right? You start obeying uh, uh, people or forces that are opposition to God. So right? if you mean inside the boundary, you are free. Exactly. So inside the boundary, you're free. So I believe that this is a submission. So you submit, but this submission sets you free. Right? So, you know, one of the things that I was doing recently is the concept of, uh, you know, I'm going for horse riding lessons. All right? So you have horses in the wild, right? Those horses are free, you know, from, a, from, a, from one perspective. Right, yeah. but they have other chains, right? Because they have to search for food, right? They have to search for mating, all that sort of thing. They're just worried about their basic desires, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't have a greater purpose, right? But the horses in a riding school or in law enforcement or in farming, right? They have a greater purpose. They are being fed their food. They don't have to go and search for the food. They're being fed the food, but now they're serving a great purpose, right? Which is basically they are doing a great, uh, great outgrowth of their life. So this is one perspective that, yeah, there's some sort of restriction, but that restriction sets them free from many other things. So just, just an ex example and analogy, right? So the idea is that you have these big boundaries, that you, as long as you're within that boundary, you strive to earn the love of God. You yeah, right? become a part of it. Become a part of it. God. No, you cannot. So this concept of becoming a part of God is, is very... Uh, it's a big thing to say, right? God is near us in a sense of that we can be very close to Him from our worship and from our submission. But to, to think about being a part of it is a big thing. Because imagine, right, how can you be a part of someone who is so great, right? It's so great that you can't even encompass that, right? The wisdom, the knowledge, the ability, the power, the control, everything, right? So God will always be separate from the creation. That's just by definition, right? Like, like we got like you know, can a horse become part of me, right? It's just like too different, right? Horse is a horse. He's so physically limited in his body as well as his mind, his intellect, his design, right? So how can he be part of me, right? Which is a very important thing, because now when you said the difference between Christianity and Islam, in essence, the most important difference is the understanding of God Himself, yeah, yeah. right? So in a Christian perspective, you know, so, so the main difference is basically we think and we believe that God is separate, is separate from the creation and he is unique, he is the only one, mm -hmm. right? So in Christianity, you may have a concept of, you know, the Trinity, right? We don't have that and that's the biggest difference, right? So we think God is God and creation is creation. 
So Jesus is creation, Muhammad peace be upon him is creation, so we believe both of them as messengers of God. They were holy men, they were not disobeying God, they were conveying the message of God, but they're still different from God, right? Their abilities are way different. So right now this conversation that we are hearing, other than your recording, my recording, and maybe the, you know, the CSIS or RCMP whoever is fine, that's a joke by the way, <laughs> right? So other than that, only God is hearing this conversation. Right? I don't believe your school teachers are hearing this conversation, right? You don't have a live connection. Oh, yes. <laughs> right? Uh, likewise, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not hearing this conversation. Jesus, peace be upon him, is not hearing this conversation. The only one who is hearing this conversation is God. And that is the essence, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this thing of truly submitting, depending, asking, begging, submitting to God alone. So that's the key essence. And we believe this is how Jesus was. Right now, you and I may wonder, how do I know which is the truth? Yeah. Right. So my analogy for that is, do you have a fingerprint scanner on this one? Oh yeah. You do? Yeah. Right. So if I if I see, can I see that? Yeah, sure. Okay. So you have a fingerprint scanner, right? Uh, where is that? Here. Yes. Okay. So let's lock it. So if I put my fingerprint, it won't recognize, right? Yeah, it won't recognize. But will it recognize yours? Let's test it out. Yeah. It does, right? Yes. Okay, great. So God has given us this heart, right, that we were born with. Because as essentially who we are, right, we are built with this body, right, which is the external, right? The body was different when you were young. It will be different when you will be old, right? And you will leave this body in the earth, right? But what you're moving forward with is your soul and my soul, right? Yeah. So we essentially have this inner component, which is the soul, the heart, right? And, and the idea is basically that it is given this base firmware operating system, the instincts, the insight, the design that can recognize the truth, just like your phone can recognize the fingerprint, right? So if I come to you and I say, hey, this is the understanding of God. This is the book from God, right? And then you take that understanding and you read that book and then you compare it with any other understandings out there. Your heart will tell you which is truth. Yeah, you right? Yeah. So that's one of the key things. But now, just like your phone, when you keep adding more apps to it, it becomes slower, right? Mm -hmm. It becomes slower, it's, it's not responding to you, it gets rusted. Heart can also get rusted by our environment, the philosophies, the theologies that we are around, right? So that's why discussion, some debate, some logic, some research can actually help, right? So I encourage you to do that. And then to think about it, like what makes sense to have one God who is extremely powerful, fully in charge, completely perfect, or to add to his dominion a son, a wife, or a, or a spirit, and you know, have this complicated trinity, right? That's something for each of us to consider. Now, because if you add that exception, when do you stop, right? Once you bring in that exception of like, okay, Jesus is the son of God, but then, you know, what prevents from Muhammad from being a son of God? Right? What prevents me from being a son of God? Right? May Allah protect us from this. Right? Because so, we believe that God is so glorious that He doesn't have any son or wives. Right? So if you create one exception, when do you stop? So that's one essence. The second thing is around salvation. Right? So we believe that each individual is essentially responsible for himself or herself. Mm -hmm. Right? And you have that inner good in you when you're born. Right? You have that base operating system, the configuration. Uh, the innate nature, the what we call like the fitra in Arabic, which is the, your innate understanding, your, your sense, right? So everybody has that, right? And then you're responsible for your own sins, right? But those sins can be forgiven by asking God for forgiving, forgiveness, by doing good deeds, and so on and so forth. Yes. Does that make sense, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so essentially, coming back to your question about, you know, you know the story of Adam. Yeah. He was put in paradise yeah right and he was given you can eat and drink from yeah. everywhere yes right and uh, he had a wife yeah. right you okay so we believe in all that yeah okay now he was forbidden one tree right so that was the boundary oh correct mm. so now think about it God from as far as we know God did not say that this tree is you know you're gonna have a lot of fat or cholesterol or you know intoxication he just said, don't worry about this tree, right? Mm -hmm. So that is part of the trust. Once you submit to someone, once you trust your God, that's, that's the end of the discussion, right? Because I trust my God 
I don't have the wisdom to understand what cholesterol is or who knows what God has in his wisdom, right? Because my intellect is so limited. So I'm going to submit to God. He said, don't go to the tree. That's it. I'm not going to go to the tree. Make sense? So that was his boundary, right? But he falls short, right? He ate from there, right? Because of, you know, the, the, the consistent inspiration or consistent bothering or, you know, incitement from the Satan, right? So Satan was someone who is like challenging the human beings to show God that this human race that you've selected to be created is going to be disobedient and dis- ungrateful to you. So you can t- continuously do that, right? So he did that. Adam falls short. What happened next? Out of paradise. Right. What else happened? Oh, we will die. Huh? The day is dirty and suffer. Okay, yeah. but was Adam forgiven or not? Uh, they were. Hmm? They were forgiven. Exactly. They right? So forgiven. that's very important. That we will make mistakes. Nobody is asking us to expect us to be perfect. The point is we have to try our best. And when we fall short like Adam falls short, we sincerely ask God for repentance and forgiveness and we do better next time. Okay. So Adam, we believe, was completely forgiven. As if there is no sin. Right? Now, the consequence, yes, we are put on this earth and everybody is trying. Right? So essentially, my goal, as you were saying, is to get back to the paradise where I don't have to worry about a job. I don't have to worry about my education. I don't have to worry about every anything. This is my retirement. You know how this concept of that, you know, you want to study, make money, and then you're going to retire, right? But you want to retire, your body is already weak. So the idea is to retire in paradise when you have strength and you're strong, and your body is strong as well, right? So when we submit and live within those boundaries, a couple of things happen, okay? Number one, we earn the love of God, right? We all want love, don't we? Right? But the human love, like human, is limited. Right? Because you're going to only be together with someone until you are alive, until that person is alive. The love of God is forever. The love of God is complete and perfect. So, number one, when you obey God, you earn the love of God. Secondly, your soul nourishes. Your soul connects with God. Right? So your soul has contentment, happiness, love, and comfort. Right? Thirdly, you have eternal residence, eternal enjoyment in paradise. Right? And fourthly, Fourthly, when we all obey the laws of God, the society flourishes. Okay? Let me give you an example. When do you have do you guys have a driving license? No, yeah. Okay. But G1? No, no. Okay. But you know when you go for a G1, right? You have speed limits. Yeah. Who set those speed limits? Government. Right? But we said that you know this is a good speed for the car to stop and you know avoid accidents and things like that, right? So that's based on research. Now that's fine because those are not clashing with God's laws, right? Because God says, you know, work on safety and protecting each other. So that's in congruence with God's laws, mm-hmm. right? My point is, this is from government law and their research, right? And it's beneficial. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Right. Now imagine God's laws from his own wisdom, right? Those are so beneficial for the society that as a whole society basically nourishes and flourishes when we follow the God's law around worship. So we don't worship human beings, we worship God. When we follow the God laws around relationship, around businesses, around transactions, around so on and so forth. So this is the essence, right? Is the purpose of life is to submit to God, earn the love of God, benefit the humanity, and get back to God, you know, after life within the paradise. It's also the goal of after life, right? Exactly. It's the same goal. Right. Because this is temporary. Right? Because if you are only going to be defining your success based on this world, yeah. you may not be successful. Yeah. But think about Jesus peace be upon him, right? Was he you know from a from some angle, was he successful from one angle, right? If you if your metric is like, you know, oh, why were people rejecting him? He had a tough life, right? Yeah. People were fighting him, refusing him, all that sort of stuff was happening. Similarly the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, right? But who won eventually? Right? Yeah. Jesus, peace be upon him, right? People now fall there, right? Likewise, when the Prophet Muhammad came as a next messenger to Jesus, right? He had a hard time too. But eventually, now look at how, is, how the message has been delivered, right? But the point is, it's not about personal success, yeah. right? It's about this, they were doing the work of God, 
right? So just also from that angle, when Jesus came, right, people who were following Moses were supposed to be upgrading to? Following Moses. So before Jesus, people were following the law of Moses, right? Okay. This was essentially the law of? Ten Commandments. Which was from? The God. From God, the God, right? But delivered by Moses, right? When Jesus came, right, anybody who was already following Moses, who was he supposed to follow now? Jesus, right? Now, likewise, when Muhammad came, anybody who was following Jesus and Muhammad is supposed to follow? Muhammad. Right? So that's the thing. Now, it's for you to research that, hey, is Muhammad a messenger of God or not? If he is, then you should be following who? So it's an important question. Just like it's an important question for you to do your schoolwork and figure out, you know, who you're going to marry or who, which car you're going to drive, it's much important for you and I to figure out is Muhammad a messenger of God or not? Because we, you and I agree that Jesus is a messenger of God, mm -hmm. right? And I don't believe that Jesus is the son of God, right? Because it doesn't make sense to me. It's not natural for me. I also believe that Moses is, is a messenger of God. Now, the difference that we have to see is that is Muhammad a messenger of God? Is Quran the book of God? Now, from, now when you're talking about Quran itself, it is the only book from God that has been preserved word better, right? So it has not been changed. Right? So Bible today, you don't have the original words that God, that Jesus spoke. Right? But for Quran, we have the original words that Muhammad recited from the recitation he received from God. Right. Make sense? Yeah. I, I totally understand. Okay, next question. <laughs> Good question. Next question. Good question. Oh, actually, I have a question now. Each of you person or each of the people or each of the race, they have their own religion, right? No. no. That's a very good point. No, so, okay, religion is from? God. God. So a religion is not specific to a race, is it? No, but uh, it also depends on uh, countries or the cultures. They have different religions, right? And uh, you actually believe Muslim, right? And uh, what actually makes you strongly believe your religion? Okay, great question. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the culture first, right? So, from from an angle of nations, so certain countries may have a majority of religion, correct? So one country may have a majority of people following a religion, right? So within that country, you can have like all different types of people following it. It could be like you know white, black, brown, doesn't matter, right? So that's a different thing. It's now this has to do with politics. You know the the society how religion is spread and all that sort of thing mm -hmm. right now in islam do we have black people in islam yeah do we have white people in islam yes. do we have chinese people in islam yes do we have philippines yes pakistanis yes. indians well, it's Somali. not about race sorry it's not about it's not race. about race right now i mean in this mosque i'll show you like you have all all the races right mm -hmm. we have like i mean i have people who are chinese and they have converted to islam and they're Chinese who are born Muslims, right? So it's not, it's for all races, right? Now, the question about like, what makes me confident about this is the truth, yes. right? So the first thing, as I was mentioning earlier, is that just like your phone recognizes the truth, mm -hmm. your heart also recognizes the truth, right? So that's one thing. So you take this. So I'm saying that God is one, right? And I'm saying that, you know, uh, if you want to reach to God, you obey God and you call out directly to God. You don't need to go through any intermediaries. You don't need to ask somebody to, to confess your sins to somebody to go to God, right? If you want to ask something, ask God directly, right? You know, don't say, oh, Jesus, help me. Don't say, oh, Muhammad, help me. Don't say, oh, the elephant, help me. The statue of elephant, elephant help me, right? Don't say, oh, Buddha, help me. Right? You need anything, only God can provide that for you. Everybody else is itself a servant of God, dependent on God, you know, dependent on God's mercy. So why go to Him and not go directly to God? I'm inviting you to this, right? Uh, and I'm saying that God is so perfect that He doesn't have a wife, He doesn't have a son, He doesn't have a daughter. And, you know, that's wrong for us to say something like that. It's not natural for us to think like that. Right? I'm saying that, you know, you are not responsible for the sins of Adam. 
You're not responsible for Adam's mistake. And that Adam's mistake was forgiven. Right? And I'm, I'm telling you that the God that you are, uh, that, that is your God, is, is someone who knows everything. He's fully in charge. Nobody can harm you or benefit you except by the permission of that God. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that that God who's so powerful is immensely wise. Anything that happens to you has a wisdom behind it, right? So you may find it painful, but longer term it has a wisdom. So this is my invitation, right? Now that's my call, the call of Islam, right? Now you take that and you compare that with any other call that you're exposed to. Whether it be Catholic, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Buddhism, whether it be, you know, anything. So you take that and then you say, okay, which of these definitions makes sense to me? Right? And then you ask God, oh God, I want to...